I like to have fun uh, playing this game with, with my name because I'm at a point in my life where I can do this now, but when I was literally all of you all's ages, I wasn't able to do that. I wasn't able to go around and let people make fun of my name and, and laugh and, and do all of those things we just did because saying my name, I was afraid to say my name, particularly in middle school, because saying my name led to some of the most horrific, well, I won't say the most horrific, but to serious levels of, of bullying, verbal as well as physical. As you can tell by my name, Ome Congo, I was born in a very far away place called Boston, Massachusetts. And, well, it's far from here, I mean, yeah. but my, my, my parents are from Congo, and they gave me this name, which a name is which I think is extremely powerful. You see, I was named after the person who saved my grandfather's life as a child. And he was a warrior in my father's village. And I felt like this was a name to be proud of. But the challenge is, we live in a society where the less you know about people, the more you make up. And we make up our minds quickly and we change them slowly. So when people would, when I would come to school, people wouldn't say, oh, Ome Congo, you're named after this warrior. All they saw was the images of anything African that was on television, which was negative, which is still negative today, and they responded accordingly. So if I'm putting on African jewelry to wear to school, I'm feeling proud, I'm getting punched in the face. I'm, 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 I'm doing a project showing where my family comes from, and as I said in, in, the, in the rhyme I shared with y'all, we get called monsters. People treating us literally like we're animals. And so, even though you couldn't tell I was from another country by hearing my accent, just my name alone led to serious challenges. You see, I had three challenges growing up. The first strike I had going against me was my name. The smile, my, my, my family got beat up regularly, rock stone at us. My, my oldest brother got shot in the eye with one of those metal BB guns just because people hated what they didn't know. The second challenge that I had was that I didn't grow up with a lot of money. I don't know what your experiences are like or the experiences of, of, of your parents or other family members, but I hope you don't know what it's like to have to grow up sleeping next to rats because I know what that's like. I hope you don't have to grow up knowing what it's like to have to go to sleep in the coldest of winters, northeast winters, and have to cover your stoves with blankets to keep yourself warm because I know what that's like. Having to share clothes, having to cover up uh, lots of different challenges, having no electricity, no hot water. Those were my experiences. A lot of things that we see stereotypically about other places in the world, some of us forget that many of us in this country are dealing with that, even to this day. The third challenge that I had was that I grew up at the height of what some people affectionately called the crack epidemic, which is very similar to the heroin epidemic, people are, the opioid epidemic people are experiencing now, but there was a little bit of a difference. Number one, primarily being the extreme levels of violence that were being experienced in inner city neighborhoods to such an extent that if you were black or Hispanic, they would predict that you would either be dead or incarcerated before the age of 25. Some of us will walk around with shirts saying black men, endangered species, Hispanic men, endangered species. So if you think about those three strikes, you could probably see why I didn't feel like I was worthy enough to do anything great with my life. Why I didn't feel like I, was, I would be able and confident to speak before a great school stu and student body like you all today, or even attend a school like this. But one thing I realized is that I have a choice. Somebody say I have a choice. <laughs> say it like you mean it, I have a choice. You see, for me, I could have, in my neighborhood, heavily affected by the guns and the violence, I could have got access to the guns, I could have got access to the knives and shot back and stabbed back, but I didn't, wasn't interested in that. So I picked up the pen and the pad and I started to write back. Because my belief is, everybody repeat after me, I define my circumstances. My circumstances don't define me. So what I'm saying is, regardless of what you're dealing with, you have the ability to make that change. Maybe your challenges are not financial. May, uh, maybe your challenges have to do more with, with a family situation. Maybe your challenges have to do with where you live. Everybody's going through something. No matter where you are in the economic ladder, no matter what your religious background is, gender, whatever, everybody's going through something. But you know, even with the challenges that I dealt with, 
in overcoming them as some of the things that were said in the bio, been traveling around the world, almost 30 countries, rapping, I got five CDs, five books, met incredible people, uh, presidents, Jay-Z, all of these different guys, lots of different folks, was working out with the Knicks a couple of weeks ago because my wife and I have these hot yoga studios and they came through and worked out with us and all of these incredible things I'm doing now, I would never have been able to do if at this age, I hadn't realized that if it is meant to be, it is up to me. So I'm saying these things not to impress you, but to impress upon you that when you take the decision to have a no excuse mentality, you can start to make some changes. But however, there's still a little part of me that is extremely frustrated because even though I feel like I'm doing some cool things now and I feel like y'all are going to do things even cooler than what I'm doing, part of me always reflects back to my time kindergarten through high school. And Dr. King said, all it takes for evil to prevail is for good-minded people to do nothing. And so even though I did the Harvard and the MITs and been on CNN and all of this stuff, I still think about my time when I was sitting in spaces like this and people would say things like African Bush Boogie and people would say things like you're ugly and your, your name is ridiculous and you need to go back to Africa. And I think about the people who sat next to me and did nothing, who said nothing, who watched it happen, maybe even laughed. And one of the things, and that's what led me to start an organization called Upstander because it's about standing up when you see injustice. And so my question to you all is, who are the people in your school, in your neighborhood, in your community, who are just like how I was and need you right now? Do you have the ability to stand up for them? Do you have the ability to say, it's wrong to call somebody that name? It's wrong to talk about that person's clothes. It's wrong to talk about this person negatively because they support a, a, a political candidate that you don't like. Who's the person here who's willing to do that? Because I'll tell y'all, being an upstander is not always easy, but being a bystander is. One of the things y'all ever heard of Adolf Hitler? People talk so much about Hitler and every grade level studies him. But here's the thing that one, a lot of people don't understand about him. Everything that Hitler did was legal. Because when you surround yourself with bystanders who won't challenge you, you can do anything you want like change laws and commit entire acts of genocide on a people. And that's the extreme, but Hitler didn't grow up in a vacuum. Hitler went to schools. Hitler was surrounded by people who tolerated or who was silent. But what y'all gotta realize in this day and age, that silence is compliance. Silence is compliance. By you not speaking up, you become part of the problem because I got news for you. If you surround yourself by people who represent that, chances are you are that. So what I want to do with the time that I have left here is I want to give you all four simple steps of what it means to be an upstander and not a bystander in this school and beyond. I'm giving you four. If you feel that you're pretty strong in three of them, then pick, another, pick the one that you're not the strongest in and just start doing that. See, because me, now I'm at a point where I just speak up on anything. Like, you're a Lakers fan? What's wrong with you? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, the Celtics all day. Uh, but I'm just, you know, but, but on a serious note, thank you, I see you clapping your hands. I should have brought a prize. But, <laughs> but, you know, but on a serious note, you see, I'm at a point now where I speak up on any injustice I see. I'm not afraid to lose friends. I've lost friends. I'm not afraid to lose relationships with family, but I've lost that. Because as Dr. King said again, the time is always right to do right. And we're in a society now where we need you all to do more right by all of us. Because the silence of the many is causing more problems in a society where hate crimes are on the rise over 200%. And even on schools, college, high school, middle school, elementary school campuses, we're seeing ignorance on the rise. How can we start to be different? Number one, everybody repeat after me. Say give. Yeah. 
Say it like you mean it. Give. This is step one of how you go from being an upstander, a bystander to an upstander. You have to start being more willing to be giving of your attention, which means that as leaders in this room, you all have to learn to do more listening than you do talking. You have two ears, one mouth. You're supposed to use them in proportion. You see, everybody can go into a story about what their challenges are, what your problems are. But true leadership is listening to what other people are going through. Because I've been, you have no idea what some people had to go through just to get into this building today. I've been in schools like this where students, you could be sitting next to somebody who was a child soldier. I'm not joking. You could be sitting next to somebody who's been trafficked in ways we won't talk about here. Sitting next to somebody who's dealing with, uh, you know, economic hardships that you don't know about. And sometimes we can put up a front. But you just don't know until you listen. You see, we can all go through classes to learn how to be better speakers, but what are you really doing to be a better listener, to be a more active listener? Because even if somebody doesn't have it worse than you, they still got something going on. And I guarantee it, if I sat down with every single one of you, individually, we could pull something off that you probably don't want to share with your friends. Everybody's dealing with something. Spend more time listening. You want people to listen to you? Spend some time listening to them first. People aren't going to feel you until they know that you feel them. That's number one. You have to realize that every single day, you have the opportunity to be a rainbow in somebody's cloud just by being a better listener. And even as you're going into the break, some of y'all may be doing service projects and other things. Sit down and listen to people. But don't do it out there and then come here and not do it here. Because you got classmates that need you as well. The second step is release. Everybody say release. release. Say it like you mean it. Release. release. You got to learn to let it go and to let them go. Number one, let them, let it go. Anyone ever heard of Nelson Mandela? Yes. Nelson Mandela spent 27 years in prison in South Africa. Do you know where he went after he got released? He could have been like, yo, I ain't been a Taco Bell in a minute. Yo, I, give me that McDonald's, right? But he went to the home of his prison guards. To let that family know that he forgave them. You cannot be a leader. You cannot be an upstander if you don't practice the concept of forgiveness. I have been in some countries where some of the people who are presidents of these countries, they became in charge just so they can exact revenge on communities that did their ethnic group wrong. We don't want that. You have to learn to forgive. Remember, forgiving is about you. It's not about the person who hurt you. How many ever had somebody hurt your feelings? Raise your hand. So you have to learn to let it go so that you can grow, not them. They're somewhere not even thinking about you. Forgiving is made up of two words, for and giving. It means for giving yourself permission to move forward. You have to remember that. Y'all, every, everyone's been in a car here. You notice your car has a larger windshield and a smaller rearview mirror. It's so you can spend more time looking forward and less time looking backwards. Use your past as a place of reference, but not a place of residence. You can't live there, and you definitely can't be an upstander if you do that. But then that leads us to the second part of release. Y'all got to learn to let them go. Great philosopher by the name of Will Smith said that, do you, I think he's a, look, I'm writing a book on Jay-Z. I think these guys are philosophers. I got a PhD in Jay-Z, so that's my, and if you come to American University where I teach, I teach a class on Jay-Z, so shameless plug. Uh, not so shameless, but you got to realize that you, Will Smith said, you are a direct reflection of your five closest friends. So if you're surrounded by five races, chances are you're the sixth one. I'm just saying, like, I was never that good at math, but I got that part, right? Uh, if you're surrounded by, by, by five activists who want to make change, chances are you're number six. So again, because if not, why are you laughing at certain jokes about certain communities if you, don't, if you don't think that's cool? So ask yourself, why are certain people comfortable making certain jokes about people around me? Because you reflect them. And what's worse for y'all than when we were your age is that y'all got social media. So y what y'all been doing since like this age is out there forever. Like four plus ever, like forever, it's never going anywhere. Even if you delete it. Because before you put something on your phone, it goes up to five satellites before it gets there. So when y'all are applying to colleges, jobs, internships, summer programs, 
You think stuff is hidden, but they're pulling it up. Do you really want people to see you as part of this group or that group at that party? Y'all got to start cleaning that up. Jay-Z says, everybody looks at you strange and say you changed. Like I worked that hard to stay the same. Y'all are working hard to be great. Stop surrounding yourself with people who don't want to do that. Next step is overcome. Everybody say overcome. 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 You got to learn to overcome your fears. Standing up to people who are bullying people, saying something is wrong, it can be scary. But remember this every time you get scared. Fear stands for F-E-A-R. All it means is false evidence appearing real. False evidence appearing real. Most of the things you worry about will never happen. If you go back to this school, I, I don't know how old this school is, but I guarantee if you go back 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 50 years, whatever, there's a group of people who may not have been allowed to be in this school for whatever reason. But somebody was fearless and fought for change so that we can have the student body that we have right now. So you have to be fearless knowing that you're fighting for something greater. You're, the work that you're doing here can affect somebody else better down the line. And that leads us to win. Everybody say win. win. Say it like you mean it. Win. You got to believe that you will win if you, do not, if you do not give in. I believe that we can conquer bullying. I believe that we can end all the isms. I believe that we can create a society where everybody is treated equally, but we have to believe that we can all win. You all need to not have a, a, see a lot of these hate crimes and things that are happening right now in this country, they're, they're, they're happening because of something we call a, 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 a philosophy of, of scarcity, which means that people don't think there's a lot to go around, so they're fighting for these individual pieces of the pie. But if you have a philosophy of abundance, you believe that there's enough to go around for everybody. And that's what I believe, that's what being an upstander means. So if you focus on give, release, overcome, win, what does that acronym spell out? Say it louder. Thank you very much. Grow, give, release, overcome, win. You see, life is about not just going through experiences, but growing through them. I believe being an upstander is about looking your friends and classmates in the face and saying, we can do better. We can always do better. Ziegler said, we can always better our best. And that's what I wanted to leave you all with today before we wrap up, because I believe that society... We're in a dangerous place right now. And I believe that on some level, we as adults have lost our way. And I believe that you all are the people who are going to be able to save us as a society, as a planet. That's why I do this work. And I, I leave you all with that challenge. I'm going to share one more piece with you all as we close. But you all are in a, I'm, I'm a comic book head. So you all know the other, my other great philosopher, Uncle Ben, you know, said with great power because great Oh, whew, I was about to say. Yes, great responsibility. You all are in a powerful place and a powerful space. And I believe that it gives you the responsibility to do more. Not just be outstanding, but be upstanding. All right, I'm going to share this last piece. But before I do that, everybody repeat after me one more time. I know if I believe. I can and will achieve. The past is the past. I will no longer regret it. I will focus on this gift which I call the present. I will get out of my own way and live my best life starting today. If I focus on my dreams and not my sorrows, my trials today will be my testimony tomorrow. I have not come up with a creative name for this poem I'm about to share, so for now I'm going to call it Leadership. One day you'll see it on one of my albums and I'll have a much better name. But... Yeah. Are we good? Yeah. All right. Check it. This is just for anybody in here who calls themselves a leader, which I hope is everybody. The chosen few are the few who chose to step up to open doors tightly closed. So you call yourself a leader, but what does that mean? Getting green, turning green, madly running your teams, sadly killing the dreams of a hopeful teen, madly willing your ideas, not even listening. Does it mean you celebrate on election day because you can add your new position to your resume? 
Can you handle criticism when your peers diss you? Because you don't care about theirs but only your issues? Pastor Tissue makes me sad how some leaders let power get to their head. Constituents, they forget. You're just a leader in name if you're just searching for fame, for a claim. It's a shame why some get in the game. Leadership ain't for the lame. Don't take it in vain. Time to rethink your position. Understand why you came. You see, a leader, someone who listens first and speaks. Someone focused on being the change we seek. A leader understands they represent all people. Don't do that. Your leadership will never have a sequel. Do you seek to understand before being understood? Do you take time to visit other neighborhoods? We need real leaders to step up to the plate, to take a swing at racism, other types of hate, to stomp out bullying, help and genocide. Do your best to help others hold their heads with pride. A leader builds a team, can't do it all by yourself. And a leader remembers to practice good health because you're no good to others if you're no good to you. So let me ask you again, is leadership in you? Thank you all very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.